This whole week of Monday, July 25th, Bitcoin and crypto price is going to be extremely interesting. Fireworks could really set off. However, those fireworks might not be monodirectional. It could go up and down and then meet in the middle and then have true uh, directions come Thursday and Friday. It's going to be a very tricky week and here's why. Economic, high impact economic events such as FOMC statements, things to that effect, greatly affect Bitcoin's price, particularly upon traditional market open or sometimes at 8.30 a.m. Uh, if the high impact economic data uh, comes out at 8.30 a.m., which I believe it's one or two days this week, it does. But there's a high impact event on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which rarely happens, at least, I mean, the in the roughly six months I've been following the high impact data, I don't think that's happened once. This week can be a true roller coaster ride. And here's the thing, Bitcoin is positioned both where it could easily break up for another two to three weeks, maybe slightly longer, up to 29 to 30K. It, it's structured where it could. Is it probable that will happen? No, I'm not saying that, but it, it's structured where it could. So you could, it has a foundation and a house could be built on it. However, there are some, a little bit of warning signs where also this could be a true tipping point if the economic high impact data is pretty bearish for the stock market, which is likely and things could really tumble around. So really quick example, you have the weekly RSI behind me. It's very common that RSI, as it, as the green gets away from the white, it likes to bump its head on the white before then price continues another leg lower. So it just bumped its head. But but on the structural side where it could go up higher, you just had a nice, uh, nice strong buyback on a weekly candle, a nice green week that got rejected by the weekly 10 and this uh, really important origin line here. But it's still a nice strong green week after strong buyback. And so far, Bitcoin price has backfilled roughly half this candle, which is good. It's pretty fairly, it's fairly common with uh, for a green week. And so far, this buyback is looking fairly solid, which could easily turn around, but it's positioned where it could go up. And then you have other things such as the monthly stokes. Uh, which are trying to get across up right now, which, you know, stochastics on something like the one hour and four hour aren't really that high impact, but on the monthly, it could be. And this is this locked in? No, it's not locked in, but it's structured where it could go up. So in this analysis here today, I'm going to show you key levels to look out for so you don't essentially get chewed up and spit out by potential fireworks both directions. I want you to anticipate it could be volatile both directions, not monodirectional. And then, and then from the time axis, I would make the guess that Thursday or Friday, true direction with continuation, you, you'll be able to see more of an edge by then. So let's go get these charts. We're going to start off with the daily chart. All right, here's one thing that really could uh, get things heated up. Bitcoin's daily RSI is in what I call the golden pocket. And this is true for essentially any time frame, what I'm about to show you. But the level of impact and continuation it gets. Uh, look how bald I look. That's why I cut my hair off. I'm thinking about just shaving the whole damn thing. <laughs> but to here, let me take a quick look. Should I, should I just shave, like be like, you know, shiny headed? All right, anyway. So, but this is in the golden pocket. And uh, and what I mean by that is the RSI has multiple times used the white moving average, exponential moving average of the RSI as support. It's higher, high, higher, low structure. And it has gotten, a, it's the green or the RSI itself has peaked its head above the white zone and is coming back below the white zone to meet its partner in crime or its best friend, the EMA, right between the white line and the red line. And when you see this happen, it doesn't have to be perfectly like, you know, a three higher highs and higher lows. It could be just two or it could be 10, but it, you, the green leaves this white zone, comes back down to meet the EMA. Uh, and sometimes you can wick past, you know, the green can wick past and then come back up. So see how this wick past here, that same thing could happen here. So you can get another whole day pullback, but it's still in the golden zone. So this right here is a potential setup for a strong, strong, strong move up. However, what also often happens though, okay, so you, this is evidence that, you know, things could really go both ways. And, and, and this might be one tool to figure out which way it's going to go. So I'm starting off with perhaps maybe the strongest indicator. Um, yeah, the best of both worlds. 
using this daily RSI, which I show you how to set up the RSI just like me, and it's got timestamps and everything in this video right here, and I'll also link it to you at the end if you wanna learn how to use this exact indicator instead of the chart with templates and all that. But what also often happens is after you do uh, form a deep low in the red zone and come up and bump your head here, instead of being in the golden pocket and ramping up, a lot of times you'll make what I call um, these are baby higher lows. So one baby higher low, or actually baby higher low, baby higher low, baby higher low, um, so on and so forth. But I would call this a mid macro higher low, which is often roughly a 45. Don't make fun of my actual, you know, uh, the degree angle, but roughly 45 degree angle. This is often the time after three baby bounces where uh, RSI of any time frame, especially the one like one hour lower time frames, they like to bounce, 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 have a deeper correction, and then get back above its R, uh, above the white line and then take off. Okay, so this is also saying that it could go either way. And honestly, sometimes you just bump your head on here and then and then you correct just like uh, how the green bump its head between the white line and the red line and really tank down. Um, so it is structurally set up where it has the foundation to build a nice big house. However, a storm could come and it could wash it all away. And this might be the key to figuring out in the, you know, just the easiest way to be on your toes. How is this green RSI behaving with the EMA? If it goes below, so if it goes below, like let's draw out the EMA first. This might be the absolute easiest way to tell. Let me make that white and then I will. So if things go below, if the RSI goes below it, that's fine. But is the next tick up? Uh, is the next tick up? And is the next tick after that above the white line? So in three days, you would be able to tell in this case that even though you had a two day pullback, so one tick down, two tick down, next tick up, and the next tick up you would be able to tell, okay, it has a chance of this activating the uh, golden pocket and coming back up. But then you would have to realize, wait, is it going to make another higher high or are you on this exact tick, are you going to start turning back around and then diving back down? It could just make a lower high and dive back down. But on a day-by-day -day basis, I'm telling you, um, there will be mo there will be times where it there isn't a strong edge, such as, you know, you know right now, it's going down um, to meet the EMA, but you know it could bounce or it could it could uh, it cra it could crash right through. So because it's a the green is above the white, potentially a little bit bigger um, of a uh, chance for upside per this one indicator, right? Not per the context of the economic data coming out, right? And when it bounces here, maybe slightly more bearish than bullish because it's below the EMA, but it also could e easily bounce here. Right. So there there it's not going to give you a hundred percent clear direction the whole time, but it's going to give you a good estimate of okay, what are the percentage percentage chances day by day of being bullish, being correct if I'm bullish or being correct if I'm bearish. And as this moves around here and either gets, you know, perhaps rejected by this, and then ticks down, such as that, if you see something like that, then your edge to the downside explodes from like, you know, perhaps. 50% to 75%. If you see something like this, you're going to know being bearish is statistically by far going to be your best uh, your best bet from a statistical mathematical standpoint. However, there could be some instances the way this pans out that it stays in the 50/50 zone, right? In the it stays in the friend zone or whatever and you can't really tell. And right now in the chart, so let me get off of this, but use this as your best friend because there is going to be a point, I'm telling you, and I, 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 if I had to guess, I would guess Thursday. There is going to be a point where you're going to get that catapult and percentage chances one way or another, and you're probably going to be able to easily see it on this RSI. So I'm not guessing exactly how the green will behave with the white, but what I'm, so listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying though is the way the green of this be interacts with the white. Use it as support, use it as resistance. Or if it goes below it, does it come back up and use it as resistance or does the green bust right through the white? How it, how it behaves with or interacts with that white line, it's going to, at one moment this week, it's going to give you a strong signal one way or another. And until that happens, most of the analysis is going to be on the very micro timeframes because on the daily perspective, you can't really tell right now.
you can't really tell what's going to happen. So let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into raw price. But I wanted to start this off with the one indicator, which I think I think it's going to be the easiest, by far the easiest to tell when you have a strong edge. So let's jump into uh, let's jump into near, bare naked price first. Check out the Discord community where I show folks how to make money in a bear market. The description section has the links to that in every video that I make. And if you're not following me on Twitter, it's at closest video this with the number two. The YouTube tiers offer folks who work 12 to 14 hours a day uh, the ability to get roughly half of what I provide for the community, but you can do it on your own time. Go ahead and click the join button below this and another video will pop up describing what I offer for each tier. All right, so let's jump into this chart. Now, until that happens, um, you know, it, it really things really could go either way. Will Bitcoin form a higher low here? Yes or no? So, and it could be anywhere in here. You know, it, as long as it stays above, I would say here, let's say as long as Bitcoin is above 20,000, 750 above that area, I think probably Bitcoin has a darn good chance of making a higher low. And if the higher low happens, if you dip below there and close a day above here, I still think that Bitcoin has a strong chance of making a higher low it, as of now. And so from a structural standpoint, I would use the daily chart, simply look at these two candles from July 17 and 18th, and that gives you 20,750. That's going to be a pretty magic line. Okay. But from a structural standpoint, let's take a look. This is a an origin line. It goes back 12 years in price history. It's a very important line. However, I don't think this origin line has been used much by Bitcoin because it's so low. Bitcoin is doing something it's never done before. And it's, yeah, this, so this, or, the orange and black used to be the, like the bear market support. Look at that. And coronavirus changed that. And now look how da low down we are. Coronavirus didn't even touch this line. Look, it, it, so it just used that as resistance, okay? So for perspective, look at that blue line. Bitcoin's never touched that before until now, and it's using it as resistance. So, I mean, I, that's that's not that great. Um, but it does indicate that comparatively, Bitcoin is so low in this bear market, and it doesn't look like it's going to let up. Um, <laughs> quite, I, I don't think a bottom's in. But compared to the other two, uh, mar um, the other two bear markets, the bottom would be in if the contexts were similar. But right now, the economic uh, context is totally different. But it just used it as resistance. However, it, you can get a failure pattern than a higher low then bust through. So it's not. It's not. Um, so you had a rejection, a rejection, a failure, potential higher low, bust through on the fourth try. That could easily happen. All right. And if you want to try to draw this, um, you don't have to draw all the way back in time and set up all the origin lines. But if you want to look at this, I'm on the daily chart. I'm on uh, the Bitfinex uh, specifically. But just look, the uh, candle, uh, the can the daily candle of June 25th, um, a little bit through the, you know, not quite to the top of the wick of the daily candle of July 8th. But just draw this line, make it look similar. That's a very important line. If I go to the hourly chart, all right, let's go to the five minute chart. Look, you'll be able to tell this line is real. Look. Where did these two pumps go up to? These fake outs before it went straight back down, right up to this line. Where did this pull back to? Right to that line. This line goes back 12 years. And the five minute, look, the five minute candles. Look, this was this was some type of, you know, some some people call the scam pump. Where did the scam pump go? Exactly to that line. This line is real. You might want to have it on your chart. Um, where did the where did this scam pump go? Straight to that line, right? All of these are going to that line and it goes back 12, even though it hasn't been interacted with for 12 years, it goes back 12 years in price and history and is parallel and runs in tandem with other uh, very, some of the most important straight lines in all of Bitcoin price history. All right. So what else are we looking for? I'm looking at this origin line and I'm looking at this horizontal here. I strongly suggest that you put those on your chart. I really do. Because in line with the daily RSI that I showed you, using these two things, okay, that thing and that thing. Good thing I'm not like sweating, like, in, <laughs> but that, if my hand stops being invisible here, this thing, darn it, that thing and that thing are going to be what you see on price, which will likely give you the, 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 the strong statistical edge. Whichever one's broken first is going to give you the right direction and you're going to be able to confirm that or, you're going to be able to have extra levels of layers of confirmation with the daily RSI. They're going to go hand in hand. And I, if I had to guess the two most important lines for this midterm um, swing in Bitcoin, it's going to be these two lines. 
and mixing that with that one signal is going to be key. Now, let me um, show you other things that I'm looking at for very short-term price action. However, I don't think the short-term price action will uh, give you as good as an edge uh, for a strong, strong move. But just so you can play with price correctly and have an idea of where it's going, uh, it's it's really simple. Uh, so let's go ahead and make myself smaller. I'm going to go to the, I think the, I think I'm going to go to Bitstamp, my Bitstamp chart. Um, and again, if you just want the exact same candles, I'm on Bitstamp. You don't, you can you can use Bitcoin versus USD on KuCoin, doesn't matter. But structurally, what's happened on this one hour chart, which I said, I think I said one hour or half hour, whatever. Look what happened. Failure rejection pattern on the top line, okay, which is very common. Failure rejection. Potential higher low. It's not confirmed yet. This is not a confirmed higher low until price gets above 23,000. So price has got to get back up here before that's confirmed as a higher low. So it's got a lot of work to do and it might not happen. But as of now, let's zoom way in here, okay, to the point of control, the bottom of the point of control. I'm going to go down to the three minute candles. Quick little fake out to get the 50 and 100x leverage people out of their longs and then blast it off right at the bottom of the point of control after using it as support. Get those uh, over leveraged long people out who were longing, you know, had stops down here. Get, get them all out. Stop cascade. Boom. Zoom up. And now it's using the top as support. So it is possible that this all ends up being. So let me zoom out. It's possible that this ends up being a, the higher low area. Okay. But you don't confirm that until it gets above here. And then after that happens, then it could form a lower high and then come back down. So this week is going to be wishy-washy and you're going to have to take it one step at a time. So even when you're on short-term price action the sh uh, and you think you have a di clear direction, the shelf life of that in this week it not only is going to be short, but you could have like scam pumps and scam dumps and it goes right back to where it was all Monday, you know, it actually could be Monday through Friday because of the high impact data. So trading short term time frames this week is going to be rough, 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 rough. If I can sound like a, rrr, 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 you know, Scooby Doo, Scooby, rough, rough. Sco that, that's not how he sounds, but whatever. Like it's going to be very difficult. So any signals that you're getting, I can't, I can't stress this enough. Any signals that you're typically are using on those small time frames, like I've been, you know, letting folks know, hey, the 15 minute 200 EMA is probably a pretty damn good line to be using, which honestly it typically is. It's uh, it's similar to the four hour 10 and it's the best fit line of Bitcoin during this whole consolidation period since that $17,500 low back here. This has gotten the small time frame direction, the absolute best. Okay, And it's the same as the four hour 10. It's the one best fit line during this whole move for the last you know month and a half. Better than any other one thing, whether it's a squiggly line or an EMA or a straight line. This has gotten the general direction of short-term price better than anything. 15 minute 200 EMA or the four hour 10. I, so if you could throw an EMA on your chart, that one would be it. So now I've given you two lines, okay? That origin line, which I showed you how to draw and that straight line, just a horizontal. For the mid the midterm move, a stronger move, okay, and then for anything short term time frame, I recommend using this line. If Bitcoin is under it and it goes up to it, it's likely going to use it as resistance until the point where it finally gets above and does what? Generally uses it as support. Then the general direction's up. But until this orange line, for me is orange, you can pick whatever color you want. 15 minute 200 EMA, again, it's the same as the 4R10. Until it's used both, uh, it's got price gotten above and used as support, the general direction is down. And right now, you know, it kind of looks like it's going to get rejected from it. But then you have mixed signals because it also had a nice um, bounce off the bottom of the point of control, which this could be a, 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 low, a higher low in formation, but it's getting blocked by this best fit line. Right. And then if it does get above this week, and I can't stress this enough, if, if price does get above this, use it as support, the high impact data, economic data that's coming out, it could just that, that those signals might not work at all. This is going to be a dangerous week to play around on the charts, I'm telling you. And that's why the things I started off with, the daily RSI and those two lines I gave you are probably going to be where it's at, where you finally get the cascade of, yes, let's do this. But until then, this might be your best bet for general direction. But I'm giving you that with a disclaimer and a fair warning that the high impact data this week, it's going to make it tough. 
It could look like it's using that support and getting ready to make a higher high, therefore I'm long, and then just go 5% down move because uh, impact, high impact data uh, came out. And uh, I released the exact times and the days and what type of high impact data is coming out on my uh, Discord calendar, which is for all tiers. So if you want to uh, join my Discord, just for a free member uh, and go to the um, announcement section for my uh, for my community calendar, I have it posted on there and uh, I plan on doing that every week. So there is benefit to being a free member as well within the Discord. So you can go ahead and check that out. Go ahead and click this video right here if you want to learn how to set up a chart like mine per what I was saying at the beginning of the uh, video with the RSI with strategic red and green zones and go ahead and click this video over here if you want some futures trading tips for folks who are new to futures trading and their tips you're not going to be able to find anywhere else on the interwebs. You just got Timified Worldwide, Worldwide, Worldwives. Uh, stay safe this uh, week. It's going to be weird. Live long and prosper.